just more meant um, basic functions. So dealing with decks of cards, like in front of you right here, if you, mm -hmm. if you click on it and drag away quickly, you'll get one card. If you click and hold, you pick up the whole deck. So try that. Okay, and then try picking and grabbing the whole thing. Okay, uh, if you pick a card, you stick it on the deck, it automatically combines it. Does it shuffle it? If you press R, it shuffles it. Let's try R. How do we move around to this screen? Oh, uh, WSAD to move. Oh, okay. Like, like moving in WoW. Um, and then, so try shuffling this by pressing R. Okay, and then press F. On it. Yep, that flip stuff. If you press um, E and Q, it rotates it. Okay. That it will come in handy later. Just trying to get you. Um, and then one more thing, because there's a lot of small objects on the board. If you press and hold Alt while looking at something, like come here and look at the deck, and then press Alt over it. It'll zoom in. Uh, if you scroll and uh, scroll and scroll, all, you can also zoom in your whole camera as well. Yep. Um, if you right click, you can orbit your camera. You see how your camera's moving around. And then if you press uh, space, it'll reset your camera way way high. Good. Uh, I'm trying to think of other stuff. Um. I think that's pretty much it for tabletop for now, anyways. So we'll do as we get to it. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, so we so we got six classes here. I'll try to kind of give you a brief synopsis of each class to kind of give you an idea of what you want. Most likely, I think you're gonna want the spell weaver, but um, six of the starting classes. There are eleven more unlockable classes that come later. Uh, this is basically your your basic warrior, berserker, brute thing. Uh, this is kind of a range tank. So he's heavy hitting and he's more range. What's that? It's Groot. It's Groot. Uh, his name is actually Kyle. I don't know if you can see that on his belt. It says Kyle. Oh, yeah, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is like a... Um, a very close quarters melee. Very weak, but... Um, it's very interesting, very unique. This is like a rogue, basically. It's stealthy, get behind and stab stuff. Uh, this is your spellcaster, generates elements, uses elements, that sort of thing. And this is sort of a support healy sort of thing. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Um, not very good in small players. It's good with like three and fours. But um, I'm guessing you want the spell weaver. I'm gonna try it. You can always swap classes when you retire. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to drag it on there and it should update automatically. Hey, it worked. Good. That's all white. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it has to load. Uh, so level one, you have six HP. This is your little HP dial over here on the red. Okay. Yep. Um, so when you take HP, you just press a numbered key over it and it'll update it to your current HP. Okay. So this game is based around playing two cards every turn and then doing the top action of one card and the bottom action of another card. So I'll just pick two random cards here. Um, as I said before, kind of be on the same card. Yeah, actually you have to pick the top of one and uh, the bottom of the others. So it can't be on the same card, no. Oh, okay. Um, so if you look at these two cards I put out, so the bottom like let's say i wanted to move i'd use the bottom of this one and then i would attack with the top of this one or if i wanted to do the opposite i could attack with the bottom of this one and then attack with the top of this one um, every card in addition to the effect that you have in here has the option to be a basic attack or a basic move which is just two attack or two move that's with this little thing in the between the line of separating so you can kind of see it here you get the two attack what? and two. So let's say you had something that you didn't want to use, like this. This little symbol in the bottom right here is a burn, which means um, you only get to use it once. 
let's say you okay. wanted to use the card because you needed a second card to play it, but you didn't want to burn it, you could use it as just a base move too. Um, so getting into the actual cards, you're just going to have to read what you got. I would really recommend grabbing all the ones that have X on them. So in the upper right middle, or upper middle, there's instead of a number, there's an X. Do you see that? Middle. Here, let me. I'm gonna go oh, DM, been. so I can actually see what you're doing. Uh, so this is one of them, this is one of them, and this is one of them. So just for like the first scenario too, I'd recommend just staying with the basics, and then when you get a lower mode well, for mil. Where'd you put them? Oh. Put them right here. I'm just gonna set them aside. Um, so you have in, in your on your character map up here, you have a number eight. That is your quote unquote stamina. That's how many cards you can have in your hand at the start okay. of the scenario. Uh, you have eight. You have the smallest hand of everybody, of all the classes. I have 10. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's get a little bit into your cards and kind of explain what they do. And then we'll, we'll start off uh, reading some text. So in the... I'm looking at your hand now. In the middle of the of your cards, there's a number, and that number is initiative. Um, when when you're which card goes first? Yeah, whoever has the lowest number goes first. So this would be really really quick. This would be really really slow. Yep. Uh, so whatever your leading card is, so you, if if you want to play both of these cards and you wanted to go fast, you'd put the leading card down first, stack them, and then once I'm done, we would reveal at the same time. This is what I mean by you're not allowed to know what other people have until you reveal them. So you would reveal it by just flipping it over and saying, hey, my initiative seven. And at that point, we would reveal the monster cards and see what order everybody goes. Um, uh, let's see. So let's just uh, start with the leftmost one, I guess. Makes sense. Just trying to explain what all of your cards do and then... Uh, yeah, you'll just kind of have to figure it out. Um, so we'll start with this one. The top is a loot. Um, there are tokens on the ground and uh, tokens in chests. And normally the way to get them is to stand on them. If you end your turn on a coin or a chest, so this is what a coin looks like. If you end your, uh, if you end your turn by standing on one of those, you just automatically get it. Unless otherwise, unless otherwise specified. So this is what's called end of turn looting. However, if you have this loot card and you play that loot top, you can be next to it. And the number is the range. So that's saying that you loot everything within range one. So you'd loot both this and the coin then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some classes have loot two, loot three, which basically means anything in this room, mine. Um, the bottom of this is a burn card, as we said before, with that little X in the corner. Which means mm -hmm. once you play it, it doesn't go into your discard like normal. It actually goes out of the game, essentially. You, you, don't, you can't get that back. Um, now, it's a really, really good mo move card. It's a, eight is a lot for movement. And uh, the other things on there is jump. So if there are obstacles, which are these little green outline thingies. Mm-hmm. Jump allows you to, guess what? Jump over them. Otherwise, you can't pass through them, but jump allows you to go through that. It also allows you to go through enemies, over traps, without triggering them, through difficult terrain. I mean, it it's go wherever you want, basically. The last it's thing is... Where? Like, I can only move, like, there or there. Yeah, you can't end on an obstacle. No, but I mean, like, I can't just jump all the way over here. Uh, well, it's a move eight, so you'd go one, two, three. Oh. So you could go up to eight spaces with that. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then the elements. Uh, given that you are an elementalist, basically, uh, we should probably discuss that. So elements are generated at the end of your turn. So you can't use the element the same turn that you generate. It. That's kind of the one finicky thing about it. Um, okay. So let's say this turn you generated light. That's what yellow means. You generated light with this thing. What would happen is, oh, there's no elemental, shit. Okay. 
There's this little elemental board here that I just pulled out. And there are six different types of elements. So on this turn, let's say you just generated light, it's going to go to the strong column. And then at the end of the round, it goes to waning. And at the end of the next round, it goes to inert, which means it's not active. Um, so it lasts for after your turn to the end of the round and one full round before disappearing. So on the first turn, you generate light at the end of your turn, so you can't use it that turn. And then the second turn, you use this thing. I'm going back to your cards, by the way. Uh, just for instance, you use the top of this one for an attack. This symbol means you consume any element to use that. This one on okay. the bottom on the bottom here, you generate frost. Um, on the top here, you consume frost. That's just what that symbol means. If there's an X through it, it consumes. If it's not, then you generate it. That one you generate leaf. That one you generate fire. That one you consume fire. That again, you consume anything, and this one you generate um, wind. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Uh, a lot of these cards are really just read and do what they say. Um, so I'll get into status effects in a second. But uh, So healing. There is a way to get your health back. Imagine that. You can heal. Um <laughs> Sorry, someone in chat just uh, posted. Uh, so healing. Uh, if it doesn't specify self, uh, your cards don't. But sometimes stuff says heal three self or allies or something like that. Then you can do anything within the range. And range one just means adjacent to you or yourself. This one's range four, so someone can be up to have four hexes away with that. So you can, if you're next to me, you can heal me. You don't have to do yourself. Um, if it's a range attack, it'll have the range on it. Otherwise, it's a melee. You're a spellcaster, so you're pretty much all ranged. Um, I think your only exception is this one. This one is uh, basically a melee attack because it, it attacks all adjacent enemies. I'm going to beat you with my freezing rod. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um... Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, okay, so let's go over status effects because there's quite a few just to kind of explain what they do. Immobilize is pretty self explanatory. That's what this one does. Um, it, it means that the monster cannot move this, um, this next round, essentially, um, until the end of its next turn, is the, the, the specifics. So if you wanted to attack. Like if someone if something ran up to you and hit you last turn, you could freeze them in place with this thing and then run away, and then they won't be able to close the gap until the, the following turn. Um, what other status effects do you do? You do wound. What wound does is it's like adding a, a dot to them. So think of flame strike from WoW. This does some initial damage and then it wounds them, so it does some damage over time. Wound does one damage at the start of their turn until it's healed off. Oh, like poison. Uh, no, there is actually poison. I was just about to explain that. Um, so, here, let's look at these things up here. See these tokens? I'm out the board. Okay. okay. So we covered wound. We covered immobilize. Uh, stun is pretty self-explanatory. You can't do anything. <laughs> uh, so if you're stunned, you can't do anything until the end of your next turn. Um, poison is not like wound. Poison doesn't do damage to you, it just makes you take more damage. So if someone does... Oh, a... right. you, told, you told me that. So instead of, let's say someone did one damage to you, instead of taking one damage with poison, it adds one. Um, so if someone does two damage to you, it does three. If someone does five damage to you, it does six damage. Um, and it's pretty consistent with that, with the exception of when you draw your times two as an attack. If someone draws a times two, this also gets included with that. So instead of Let's say he does four damage plus one, so five with poison. Instead of doing nine damage, meaning four times two plus one, it does ten damage. It gets included in that. So it's it's pretty deadly. So the, the, the poison becomes two instead of one. Yep. So again, poison does plus one damage. Wound does one damage a turn. Uh, both of them can be healed off with a heal. Um, the exception is the poison can only be healed off meaning you, you can only get rid of the poison with heal. You do not recover any HP. 
if you just have wound and you heal, you get back all the HP of that card. So let's say you had a heal three, for instance. Like this is your heal three. You mm -hmm. would get you'd get three health back if you did the wound. You would not get any health back if you have poison. So it prevents you from healing as well, which really sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, invisible, I don't think applies to you. Although it might. Oh, uh, wait. I guess your starting items does have an invisibility cloak, so we'll, we'll get that for you as well. Invisible uh, means that enemies cannot target you. It's pretty simple. They, they will focus and target something else. If you're, they'll treat you like an obstacle, so if you're standing in the way, they'll walk around you. Okay. Uh, disarm just means you can't attack. So you can still move, you can still heal, bless, and all this other stuff, but you can't actually do an attack with disarm. It's really good against enemies because they'll just move, most likely. Stun <laughs> is by far the best CC, obviously, because the, the enemies don't get to do anything. With disarm, they can still move, heal, loot, that sort of stuff, so... Um, the last two are a little difficult to uh, explain until we get into the combat, and I will do it then. Strengthen and muddle, it's kind of like advantage, disadvantage. Um, if you're muddled, you'll do less damage. If you're strengthened, most likely you'll do more. I'll, I'll get over that when we get to the, the combat, though. Um... Let's see, looking at this... These two are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'll, here, I'll talk about fire orbs a little bit. Can you see this? Your hands up here. Where? I'm looking at your cards, yeah. This one. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the, uh, this fire orbs, the third thing down says target with a circle in it. That means yes. it's multi-target. You'll hit that number of targets with it. Whereas this range attack is only a single target because it doesn't have that. Makes sense? So the circle means more than one? Correct. It'll only be on there when it's two or more. This thing, of course, specifies all enemies. And this one's a little bit different as well, where it says... This is like chain lightning, kind of, where it does everything in a line, starting from you. Yeah, I was wondering with that gain one for each enemy target. Okay, uh, that little star thing is your experience. That's how you, That's how you level up in this game. You only generate experience... Um, by using your cards and using your abilities. Like this one gives you one experience for using the bottom. This one, this is like putting, uh, popping a magic shield around you. And after every tick of you getting hit, there's this little tracker thing that goes onto it. And every time you take a hit, you move the tracker. And when you review it, you get an experience. So this thing will prevent two sources of damage and give you one experience piece. This one gives you one experience per target. This one, if you consume an element, you get plus one attack and an experience. So you won't get experience unless you consume that element. Okay. Um, I think I've covered all your abilities with the exception of this one. Um, as I said, your class is by far the smallest stamina. You only have eight cards. And unfortunately, if you, if you noticed, you have one, two, three four five burn cards on it now again you don't have to use you don't have to use the burns on these for move you can use moves instead but you do have a lot of burn cards which means you're going to run out and be exhausted really quickly that is why you have this card so on your normal turn you'd play two cards and then you would go they would go in the discard pile the next turn you'd play two cards and they go in the discard pile the next turn you play two cards and they go in the discard pile, and then you play two cards, and they go in the discard pile. That's assuming you didn't burn anything. Um, so at that point, you need to make a decision, or you can do it sooner, but at that point, you have to make a decision. You're, you, you have to rest. That's what it's called. You have to rest in order to get your cards back. You can either do a short rest, in which case you would shuffle, draw a random card, and get rid of it, and get the other cards back. Um, if you don't like the card that you lost because you really, really need it, you can pay one life to get it back and pick a different random card. You have to stick with that second random card then. Um, if you didn't want to do randomize, you can do what's called a long rest. And you, for that turn, you skip your turn. You go last. And, the, and, the, and what you do is you can just follow this, this flow chart on here. Uh, you lose one card. You get to choose which one. And 
rewards, uh, you get to heal self, and then refresh spent items. And um, I'll get over that when we get to the items. But so that's what a long rest does. So you skip your turn to be able to choose the card and get two health back. So obviously, if you're in the thick of combat, you may not want to skip your turn, right? Yeah. But if we just cleared a room and we're waiting to go into the next room, you got time. Okay. Uh, let's see. Deal. You're blue, right? Uh, so that's it for those. Uh, let's get you a couple items, shall we? I think for... This one's sitting over here. What's that? What is, what is this? Oh, those are the the other level one cards you have access to, but given that it's the first scenario, um, some of them would be kind of nice, like maybe this this healing one, but um, I think you, I would just recommend that you start with what you got here, and then later if you want to revisit these cards, you can take a look at them. Um, if you scroll down, so we look down here. Okay. You see this stuff? Oh. Yeah. Um, so this is your, your character sheet. As you level up, you'll get new perks. As you complete battle goals, you'll get new perks. Uh, perks just change your modifier deck by adding more of these good things into it. I have my own. Um, and actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my stuff up. Because I don't like it being so far back. What is in here? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, what? Uh-oh. Oh, don't worry about it. But how do I move it? <laughs> Same way you move a deck, you have to, you have to click and hold. Oh, okay. And then that other deck of cards is, as you level up, you get to choose one of two abilities to add to your rotation. It doesn't get added to your okay. hand. You still have to. You're still limited by eight cards, but you can swap out a card for that. Um, Why do I have two decks here and you only have one? I just did you put them it. together? Uh, did I? No, I haven't pulled out my cards yet. I haven't decided my deck, so I'm still setting up. Oh. Um, I'll get to it. Don't worry. Uh, so for Spell Weaver, they recommend Cloak of Invisibility and Minor Power Potion. So level ones get thirty gold which means you can spend 30 gold on the items here, and I'll just grab a couple for you as a recommended starting ones. Uh, Cloak of Invisibility. Whoops. Shit. What'd you do? Fuck. It wasn't locked. God damn it. Here, give me a sec. It's trying to go below the table. I can see that. That's something you don't have to deal with in real life. Okay. Things uh, falling through the table. Okay. Stay, please. Okay. Lock. 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 That was already locked. Lock. Okay. Six. All right. <laughs> God damn it. Lock. Okay. Cloak of invisibility here. Life. Okay. Lock. Lock. And last but not least, you want a power potion. Alright, and for me, Brutus, Brutus Striding. And minor healing potion, because I'm going to be tanking, apparently. <laughs> okay. So, uh, your minor power potion, you th these are not consumed in the sense that you get to only use them once ever and you have to buy them again. They refresh every scenario, but you can only use it once per scenario. That's what that little icon in the lower lower right means, is that it's consumed. Um, if you look at this boots, you don't have these items, but uh, if you look at these boots, it has a different icon. And what that means is that when I use it, it gets tapped. Um, I think the term is... Uh, what's the word? Spent, I believe is the word. Spent? I, I just say tapped because it, it's tapping. Um, yeah. Now, the way to get these back, and you, you, you will get these eventually, but the way to get them back is to long rest. And that's what it means by refresh spent items because once you use it, that's the only way to get them back. So these are reusable uh, in the scenario. Your two, you can only use once. 
Um, so if you open up a door and there's a lot of enemies and you're worried about dying, you may want to pop that to avoid being hit. If you got one of your burn cards and you can hit a lot of enemies, you want to use this to empower it a little bit more. Um, so you ready for the introduction? <laughs> I know it's a lot yeah. to take in and you'll uh, you'll fumble about as much as I did with her, I bet, because she is quite complicated to start with. Okay. Why am I playing her? Because <laughs> you said you wanted to be a shaman-like thing. Yes. <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, so kind of the way she plays is typically per cycle. When I say cycle, I mean before you have to short rest. So you'll get four turns to start before you need to, to rest. And then when you rest, you'll get rid of a card and you'll have seven cards. So you'll get to play three more times before you have to rest again. And then you'll have six cards. You get to play three more you get to play three more times and then it, it counts down like that. When you use a burn card, it actually um, speeds up that process. You you lose a full cycle by using a burn card. Uh, that's that's part of their cost, is that it's no longer in your rotation. So with the spell weaver, I think the general rule is you use one burn card per cycle about, depending on the length of the scenario. Um, and then once you're down to only like say four or five cards or three cards then you want to use the top of this to get all those cards back you are one of the only classes that can get back their um their cards that are lost so if there are if you have a whole bunch of cards in here and you're down to like three cards you can play this turn get rid of this card to get all these cards back and then so you have to discard that one to get all the other cards back yeah you you would uh what's the word lose this card to get all those other burn. cards back that's that's how your main mechanic works you have a lot of burn, burn cards but then you have the, the ability to get them back what burn it to get the burn ones back yep you do lose your big move jump here um the non-burn one i should say this one you can use once but uh, anyway all right so let's do a little bit of introduction here what are we doing what is gloomhaven all about everyone needs to eat Whatever your reason for coming to Gloomhaven, out here on the edge of the world, that simple fact is never going to change. A mercenary can't fight in an empty stomach. So when Jexera, a Valrath woman wearing a red cloak and enough gold jewelry to keep you fed for a decade, approaches you in the Sleeping Lion and offers to pay you ten gold coins to track down a thief and retrieve some stolen goods, well, it seems like a good excuse as any to sober up and start paying off your tab. This thief has taken some important documents, says the red-skinned merchant, her tail whipping about in agitation. I don't care what you do to him, just bring back what is mine. Based on Jexera's description, it was easy enough to knock around a few alley thugs and get a location of the thieves' hideout. You don't find yourself as a mercenary way out in Gloomhaven without knowing how to crack a few skulls. So your target is the Black Barrel. Sounds like a lovely place. And that's the, the map that I set up here. So if you're curious what Jixera looks like, that's her. Ah. She's the, the main face of the... Uh, th this is the, the cover of what the game looks like, actually. Huh. Chat is encouraging you. Spellweaver is tricky, but you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so a new location. We unlocked the Black Barrow, which is what we're doing. Uh, if you want to scroll over to the right here. I can show you the map to the right, I said. You went you went down. Where did your hand go? There we go. <laughs> I was zooming out. Okay. Uh, so this is the, the big map. As we unlock stuff, we will be adding more stickers to it. Right now, we just have the black barrel. Um, and we also unlocked a global achievement. I don't know what achievement is which. They're all like... They're all scripted and stuff, but I guess I can guess. We didn't do anything. Oh, there How we go. We unlock the thing? Uh, that, that's part of... I was reading the scenario book. That's what it says. New location unlocked the barrel. Oh, we would as far as achievements go? Yeah. Oh, it's just um, saying that we are starting... The, ci the city the G city of Gloomhaven is a militaristically ruled one. That's the achievement. That's how we start. The city is ruled huh. by the military.
da 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 city events, blah da blah blah. Okay, so now that we did that, now we get to deal with some city events and some road events. So every time we return back to Gloomhaven, before we go out again, we get to do a city event, which is something happens in the city and you just decide how you want to deal with it. And then on your way to the to, to the next scenario, you do a road event because you might encounter some thugs or something along the road. A deer? I believe there was a deer or two. Yes. Was that this game? Um, I, probably. Um, now the the city events are typically more positive leaning, and the road events are typically more negative leaning. That doesn't mean that positives can't happen in the road events, and that doesn't mean negatives can't happen in Gloomhaven. But in general. One is more positive than the other. So, road events. And berries. Always berries, yes. <laughs> Never trust the berries. Alright, so I believe this is... Oh, that's a road event. Oh, well, we'll do that as a road event, too. I have them backwards. How dare you. Okay. So here is the city event. I love how Tabletop set this up. It, it avoids spoilers. So you can alt over and read it if you want as well. It was a truly marvelous night, full of alcohol and fuzzy memories. You're headed back to your room in high spirits when you take a wrong turn into an alley and trip over a multi-mutilated corpse. What's all this then? You look up to see a city guard walk into the alley, annoyed by all the noise you were making in your re revelry. Before you can react, he draws his sword. You, what did you do? You look and see that due to the f the fall, due to the fall, I guess it's autumn, your clothes are now covered in blood. Oh no, fall on him. Uh, I'm, okay. Long day, people. The guard clearly thinks you are responsible for the man's death. This night just took a serious turn for the worse. So we have two options. Option A, do your best to explain that the man was like this when you found him. Or B, panic <laughs> and kill the guard, then dispose of both corpses. Oh goodness. What would you like to do, Krista? You want to be, be a goody-goody two-shoes, or you want to... Yes. Goody-goody two-shoes, she says. Reputation greater than five? Uh, we are not, because we are just starting. You sober up pretty quick. No, we don't do the other. Otherwise, since we aren't that high... Oh, wait, where is that party sheet? We don't have a party sheet. Um, Party sheet, here we go. That'll come in handy. Uh, so the thing I just grabbed, once it loads. Oh, this is different than what we had before. Uh, cool. Interesting. Uh, so this just tracks achievements and things like that. Um, so now we're actually losing two reputation because of this. Uh, attempts to exp Say it again. Nothing happened. Attempts to explain yourself just seem to make the situation worse. More guards show up and everyone eyes you suspiciously. Luckily, your weapons don't match the man's words. Luckily, your weapons don't match the man's words. And the guards let you go, but they do so with a mistrustful glare. So if we had high enough reputation, they would believe us. But unfortunately, in this case, they did not. Um, no. Just out of curiosity, since, we, since that little icon means tear it, I'm just kind of curious what the other one was. So if you kill him, uh, let's see, if you pay 15 collective gold, nothing happens. Otherwise, you spend all your night and you lose a check mark. Check marks are um, kind of like ex another experience that you get from doing missions and stuff. You need three of them mm -hmm. to get a perk. And if you aren't at the nearest, or if you aren't at a, um, at a number of three, so if you only have one or two towards your next perk, you'll lose it. So, bad stuff for sure if you try to kill the guard. So, good call, Krista. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the road, or that's the city event now for the road event, because we're heading to the Black Barrel. Traveling off the beaten path, you are surprised to see a large group of figures on the horizon. You take out your weapons and move cautiously forward. As you get closer, it becomes clear that the figures are not alive, but sculptures of some kind, made haphazardly out of branches, garbage, and scrap metal. There are 50 or so on the middle of the field with no other signs of life as far as you can see. 
You see a necklace that may be valuable on one of them and go to grab it. Don't touch her! You wheel around and see an old man in rags emerge from a hole in the ground and charge at you with a broken broom handle. These women are all mine. So you have either <laughs> option A, defend yourself with lethal force, or option B, attempt to calm down the hermit and resolve the situation peacefully. Still going good two shoes, aren't you? You don't want to kill the old hermit. No. <laughs> you're gonna, okay, you're going to attempt to calm the hermit? All right. You grab the broom handle and wrestle the old man to the ground, attempting to restrain his flailing limbs. You try to explain that all this is a misunderstanding, but he just keeps warning you not to def defecate on his wives. <laughs> The man is surprisingly agile and the stench of his rags also makes him makes keeping him makes keeping him pinned difficult. He slips free and scrambles around for his broom handle, muttering about the star's gift. You run away with all haste, but his odor is much harder to escape. All start scenario with curse. Good job, Krista. Uh, once again, since it's a burn card, I'm just kinda curious what the other one is. Uh player curse. You know what I should have done? I should save state it. Uh, Co-op. So we can reset and do all that stuff on still stuff. Okay. Uh, let's see. If you kill the... If you would have killed him instead, you would have gotten two gold each. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Being rewarded for killing people. Yep, apparently. <laughs> Alright, uh, so now we're at the, the Black Barrel. The goal of which is to kill all enemies. So the, the way that scenarios work is uh, we, we have a starting room and everything in the starting room is revealed. Once you go through the next door and or when, once you open the next door, the next room gets revealed and so on and so forth. So um, what you do know is the enemy types, you know these um, items here, so you know that there's a treasure chest somewhere, you know that there's two traps, and you know that there's two tables. You don't know where they are because they're not in the first room, but um, you, you do know that they are there. That is not the right door for that. Uh, what happened to it? I don't know. Okay. Uh, that got stuck on a figure somewhere. There we go. Uh, I suppose I need to copy it too, don't I? That's a vertical door, isn't it? I think it's here. Yep. Uh, one, two. Mm. It's here. No, oh, it is here. What am I talking about? Okay. So, here we go. The hill is easy enough to find. A short journey past the new market gate, and you see it jutting out of the edge of the corpse wood looking like a rat under a rug. Moving closer, you see the mound is formed from a black earth. Its small, overgrown entrance presents a worn set of stone stairs leading down into the darkness. As you descend, you gratefully notice light emanating from below. Unfortunately, the light is accompanied by the unmistakable stench of death. You contemplate what kind of thieves would make their camp in such a horrid place as you reach the bottom of the steps. Here you find your answer. A rough group of cutthroats who don't seem to have taken very kindly to your sudden appearance. One in, one in the back matches the description of your quarry. Take care of these unfortunates, he says, backing out of the room. You can vaguely make out his silhouette as he retreats down a hallway and through the door to his left. Well, it's not every day we get people stupid enough to hand deliver their valuables to us, grins one of the larger bandits unsheathing a rusty blade. We'll be killing you now. Joke's on them. If you hadn't any valuables, you probably wouldn't be down here in the first place. Okay. Uh, so we get to start in any one of, like, these seven here. Um, I'll be tracking their HPs over here. Um, so if you want to come over here, I can try to explain what the monster little tiles mean. There isn't anything really on them because they're kind of basic but uh the guards are mainly melee the range or the the archers are range obviously and the scale or the the bones are basically melee most of the time too 
Um, looking at the... What's that? My keyboard is not doing anything. Uh, oh, did your battery die already? I don't know. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I don't know. I turned it off, turned it back on. <laughs> Uh, so the bandit guard up on here, uh, just going down from the top. Uh, the top one's their health, so the the white is normal, the yellow is elite. That's why I got this little coin here to mark the difference. So the elites have nine health, the normals have six. The next one down is their movement. So the normals move three as their base move and two attack, or uh, and two movement for the elite. The next one down is their attack value. So when they come up and whack you, their base value is two. And the elite one is three. And this one, the, the, the last one is they're ranged. Uh, but given that there's a dash here, they don't do range. Uh -huh. Whereas if you look at the archer, they have a range. So they will always try to do range when they can. Uh, down here, this one is a little bit different. Uh, it has two targets, which means that when they move to attack, they're going to try to attack both of us as, if they can. Um, and then the next one down is shield. Whenever you do damage to them, shield blocks some of it. So if you do five damage to them with one shield, it reduces it by one, so they do four damage. Um, now all of all of these values here are modified by what's in this deck here. So I just flipped a card over. So if this card came up, this living bones would move plus zero, which means he's just going to be moving his base value of three, and then attacking, which is his base value of one. That one's pretty self-explanatory. This one, he shields and heals. Now, if there's no move and no attack on there, he doesn't do that. So he, they, they only attack and move when the card says so. Um, this one, he doesn't move as far because he's got a move minus two. So his three would be reduced down to one. This one, he doesn't move. Notice there's no move. So if you're standing next to him, when this one comes up, he'll do extra attack. So he does his base one plus two. This one, he moves a little bit extra and he does a little bit less damage. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Up? Say it again? Yeah. When do you when do you use these? Uh, so these cards come up whenever once we done once we are done choosing our cards. And then we okay. compare initiatives to see who goes what order. So if the monsters have a smaller initiative, because you know you saw that they had numbers on them. Uh -huh. So if they have a smaller number than you, they go first. So all that gets revealed all at once to see who does what and when. So, I need to actually uh, pick my cards here. I think I'm going to do the same as you and just uh, do basic cards for the first one. The only time I've played a Brute is in the solo scenario, so... Um, uh, let's just get rid of these. And we'll just run with that and I'll read them as we go, because I'm pretty confident I can figure it out on the fly. Okay. What am I forgetting? I'm always forgetting something. Oh, battle goals. Here we go. So during a scenario, we have the, the main mission of the scenario in order to uh, successfully complete it. Um, again, on this one, the goal is just to kill everything. That's Sometimes it's have to loot a chest. Sometimes it's you have to make it to the escape route or something like that. But in this one, it's just kill everything. There are these battle goals here that I'm dealing out that... Um, oh, frick. It's dealing to the other hand. How do I delete hands? So these are like, you get to pick one of them, and the, the value of their check marks for this first one, we'll just share them, I guess, just to help you through it. Oh, thank you. I forgot about life goals. I will do that after this, or a personal quest. So uh, this one's worth two check marks. The more check marks, the worth, the, the harder they are, or the more detrimental they are. In this case, loot no money tokens. You typically want money tokens because that's what you buy items with and upgrades with. So by foregoing getting looting or money tokens, you can get more checks, more perks. This one, kill a monster the scenario, causing at least three points more. Pretty self-explanatory. If the guy has one health left, you need to do four damage to him in order to succeed at that. This one's easier to do, but it's more detrimental because you don't, you can't loot money tokens. But, you know, this early on, I... You know, right? What's that? Like you can loot them, I can't? I can, yes. This is your personal battle goal. Yeah. So like mine, I want to kill one or more elite monsters or reveal a room. Given I'm tank, I'm probably going to be the one revealing the room. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, after this, 
we shouldn't be sharing battle goals. This is just for this first one. Um, so it should be something kind of secretive to yourself that you're trying to make or you're trying to accomplish in addition to helping the group, hopefully. Some of them can be um, like only take long rests. Some of them can be only take short rests. Some of them can be don't use items or use a lot of items. I mean, they can vary quite, uh, quite large. Uh, I forgot about the curses because of that road event. And thank you, chat, for reminding me. Uh, so, personal quests. This is what you have to do to retire. Um. Please have a son. Please have a son. Please have a son. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Well, it looks like I'm not going to play Sunkeeper for a while then. What do I got? Complete 15 scenarios or s complete 6 side scenarios? Well, I'm going to pick that one, I think. What is the last thing again? Um, okay, so when you run out of cards and it comes to your turn and you don't have two cards to play, you would exhaust at that point. Um, another way to exhaust is for your HP to go all the way down. And if you run out of HP, you will exhaust. Um, now, when you're losing HP, you have the option to discard a card from your hand, or not discard, lose a card from your hand to negate the damage. Or if you have cards in your discard, you can choose two cards in your discard to lose to prevent that damage as well. Oops. But when you have no way to prevent the damage and you go below... Well, if you hit zero, you're exhausted then. So, just I'm just curious what you got. Become exhausted 12 times and find the Skullbane Axe and use it to kill seven living spirits. Okay. Skullbane Axe, we don't have access to right now. It's something that eventually in our questing we will find, but... might be a while they're both kind of they're both going to take a while this one's going to be at least 12 scenarios and this one is whenever we find the skullbane axe and then uh the unfortunate thing with the skullbane axe is that it's a melee weapon and you're a ranged guy which means you have to run up and melee something <laughs> and as chat said as spell weaver given that you burn a lot of cards most likely you're going to exhaust a lot more often so that's what i'm thinking and I recommend you take that one. Okay, cool. So now, uh, like Pat, Pat, that is actually Pat's personal quest right now in, in our campaign. Yeah. So okay. what he does at the very end of the scenario is that he kind of cheats and makes himself lose a lot of cards really quickly. <laughs> okay, I'm going to save state one more time. Cool. All right. Am I forgetting anything else? I think, no, I think we're just gonna go at it. So, right. Okay, uh, so like I said, we start over here. Um, I'm probably gonna take the role of tanking, so I'm gonna run up and try to, try to hit them and get their attention and stuff, so. The gold one is the elite? The gold one's the elite, which means he hits harder, he does more damage. Yeah. Now, um, they will, let, let, just for your reference, let's say you're like right here next to me. Mm -hmm. You might be wondering, well, well, won't he just attack you or something like that? He will attack whoever has the, the quickest initiative, so the lowest number. So if I have a smaller number than you, he will attack me even though you're also right next to him. Um, the, the way that they focus is a little difficult to explain. I'm not going to try doing that right now. I'll just take care of it. Um, but as we play the games, I can certainly elaborate more on how they work and how their AI works. But basically, they attack whatever's closest to them first, and then whatever is fastest initiative if they're the same distance. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say on that. Um, okay. 
Well, given he's a big dude, I kind of want to use this. And... Well, I'm going to be doing... Where is it? That next turn, so... That the turn after with that, so we'll do this, I guess. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know what to do. I want to save you. Uh, I guess I only need to move two. I'm not going to use the push yet, so I'll do this. Okay. So for your first turn, given that you have a lot of ranged, you probably don't need to move too much. Um... I think everything's one everything's in range three of you with the exception of this guy over there. So in, in this situation you could um just stay put, attack top range something, and also even use your attack uh range bottom too if you want. Do my cards show up upside down? Uh if you press F they'll flip. But I mean, I thought that was... Okay. I, I, I can't see what's in your hand. But if you bring them out face up, then I can see them. Okay. So, like, you can't see this, but if I flip it, you can. That's my point, because you're not supposed to see them, right? Correct. Um, And then whatever card's on bottom is going to be your initiative, so depending on how fast you want to go. It's not really crucial for the first couple scenarios, because it is the first couple scenarios you are learning. They're not going to throw anything. You go first. Okay, uh, so everything gets revealed at the same time, including the monsters. So uh, looking at the initiatives, we got a 10 for me. A 15. That wrong. <laughs> oh, you wanted the 30? Okay. The top one was the... Yeah. So whatever's on the bottom is going to be on top when you flip it. Okay. Because, you know, you flip it like that, right? Anyway. Okay. Uh, so you, I got 10. The monsters got 15, and they're going to be shielding and retaliating. Um, retaliate, if there isn't a range on it, that means that if you're in melee range and you whack him melee, think of them, think of like you thorns. Yeah, they, they hit you back for a couple damage. But it's not an attack back, it's just you take two damage back. So, thankfully I go before so them. really hard and you hurt yourself. A little bit, yeah. Uh, it, does not, <laughs> it does not affect range, though. So, since you're not next to him, his retaliate won't, won't affect you. What? What are you doing? What? I heard a lot of noise on your end. I was drinking some water. Mm. Okay. Uh, so I could go first. Uh, let's see. Well, given that they are just going to be t uh, shielding in place, I'm going to use this as I move two. I'm going to move up. Uh, maybe I should move here. I'll move up here. Because no matter what I do status effect wise, it's going to wear off next turn. So I'm just going to I'm going to do an attack three to this elite guard, okay? okay? So, now the way attacks work is I de you know, I declare an attack. I'm attacking with attack 3. Um, come over to my modifier deck. <laughs> I see your hand scrolling over here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a card. So this is like rolling the dice. This is going to modify what my attack does. I drew a plus 0, which means it does whatever the base damage is. In these decks, there are... There's one times two, there's one miss, there's one plus two, there's one minus two, there's five plus ones, five minus ones, and six zeros. So there's 20 cards in there, and it's it's it averages out to be zero damage, plus zero damage. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so I do three damage to this guard. Looking at his... Uh, card here, here on his sheet, he has one shield. This thing doesn't apply yet because he hasn't gotten to go yet, so it's just this. 
and that reduces my three damage by one. So only two gets by. So he is down to seven damage or seven health. And that is my turn. After my mark that. See these little thingies right here? Mm -hmm. He started with nine. Now he is seven. Uh, <laughs> Can you move the the phone a little bit closer to your face? It's right by my head. It's just Oh, not. you're just not talking into it? It's, yeah, by my the top of my head. Okay. So that was my turn. Now it's the guard's turn. They now all have one extra shield and two retaliate, and that's all they're doing. So then it's your turn. So I do one bottom and one top? Correct. Yep. So I'm going to do the bottom on this one. Um, so this one, did you read how this thing works? Yeah, that's the lightning bolt one. Yep. So what that's going to do is it's going to start right next to you and go like this. Yes. So to get like the maximum effect out of that one, you, you want to be like, I it was you want to be like here so that it chains through them, if that makes sense. If you're standing back here, two of the spaces aren't going to get used. It doesn't start oh. on the target, it starts from you. Uh, yeah, I figured. I didn't know I could get all three. Um, If you would, you'd have to move. You'd have to move, like, here to do that. So you'd have to use this as a move, too. And then you could go chain lightning through them. I could do that, then. Okay. Does that burn that card then? It burns this card, yeah. No, this one. Nope. That's the one. This has the burn icon in the lower right. This one doesn't. So then I can't do it because then I can't do that. Sure you can. I'm confused. If Are I'm you... burning the card, how am I able to use the top? You're using this top as a burn. By That's using... the top that has the lightning bolt. Yes. That doesn't affect this card at all. That's not the card I need. This is the one that's got the chain lightning. Yes. And by using this if effect... I, if, I burn it, I can't, I, if I burn it and use the move too, can I use the chain lightning on it? You would use this as the move. So you would not get that's to use the... That, you would not get to use the attack bottom. You'd have to use this one to move, and then this one to attack. Use the bottom of one and the top of another. But this is the one that's burned. Yes. So when you're so done, when, this one to use this moving one. No. No, they are separate cards. They don't affect each other. This one, instead of using the attack bottom, you're going to use it as the move two, the base move two that every bottom can do. Sounds like it's hailing. Anyways. So instead of using the attack on this one, so forget about this one for now. Instead of using the attack bottom, you're just going to use the move two, which is this thing yeah. right here. You see that icon? You're going to move uh -huh. from here to here. That uh -huh. card is now done. Uh-huh. Okay. Now you're going to do this one. And you're going to use the... You're going to use the the attack top burn, right? Yes. Okay. So how do you want to apply that? You're going to hit all of them, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So... Um, I'm so confused what you <laughs> So you need to draw a line to hit all four of them. Can you do that? How do you draw a line? Well, you just, you know, point at the hexes. You're going to do like here. Oh, one, two, three, four. Okay. Or one, two, three, four. But yeah, it has to be a continuous line starting from you. So, yeah. Yeah, so one, two, three, four. Yep, yeah, there you go. All right, cool. You can hit all of them. Cool. Now, because uh, this thing's worth one experience, you're going to be hitting all three of them. You get three experience. One for each target. And a leaf. And you generate a leaf, yes. Okay. Uh, which you will, which actually happens at the end of your turn. But um, yes. So come down here to your little experience icon. And press the number three over it. Three? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's right. It's not. It's, it's, it's not. There you go. You accidentally hit the player map, but that's okay. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Uh, so you got three experience for that. 
And now this is going to be a three damage attack against all of them. So which one would you like to hit first? This guy. That one? Guard number one? You have to go. You have to. You can do whatever. The... You can do whatever order you want. Well, yeah, I'll do that one. Okay, you're going to hit guard number one. All right, so this is a base three damage attack. What you're going to do is you're going to come over here. You get to your modifier deck now. I'm just going to shuffle it here just to make sure it's all nice and good. And you're going to draw one card. And flip it. Alright. So to that guard, you got your base 3 damage plus 1. So you do 4 damage to guard 1. He has 1 shield because of this. So 3 damage gets by. Guard 1's now down to 3 health. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Uh, now which one would you like to hit? Him. You want to hit the elite, okay? Same thing. Plus zero. No! <laughs> That's actually not bad. It's better than a minus two or something. So, uh, so you do three damage to him. Minus no, one for geez. his. Minus one for his base shield. Oh, minus one. another. So you do one damage to him. Yep. So how do you? Did you already do it down? Yep. He's down to six. Okay, and the last guard. Also three damage. So zero plus three. He's also got one shield, so two get by. Okay. All right, uh, so now this was a burn card, so it does not go on your discard, it goes in your lost pile. It's gone. It's gone forever. Um, multi-target, for you, multi-target attacks like that, so you, I think you have fire orbs yet as well. That's when you'd want to use this power potion because it adds one attack to all three attacks. Oh, I forgot about that. That's okay. You still got it. I mean, you know, the scenario is just starting. You don't have to use it right away. Um, but I can get all. Um, and then so that's the end of the round. Um, since this, uh, I come up to the the monster decks. Up here? Where, where are you? Yep. Okay. Right here. Um, so see how it has this little circle icon in the lower right? Uh-huh. Whenever that happens, you shuffle the whole deck. Uh, okay. Your, if you, uh, your modifier decks have the miss and the times twos, I'm down by your decks. They also have the, um, the circle icon. So whenever I get those, uh, once your turn is done, so you if you have multiple attacks and you draw one, you keep going. But once the turn is done, then you shuffle your whole modifier deck. Okay. Um. You check the weather. I did not, but I can. Cause it sounds really loud out there. I don't hear a whole lot. Let's look at radar, shall we? Maps. Okay. Uh, in the meantime. It is now the next turn. So... I would recommend, given that this guard is going to run up, probably go here. I would recommend going a little bit later than me so that he attacks me instead of you. There is okay. a little there is a little weather, but we're basically through it at this point. Oh, okay. So you want to play a... I, I guess I can play a relatively fast card, but um, so, so if you even play, if the leaf was waning, I can still use it on the ones that need any element. Yes, element next turn, right? Yep. Oh yeah, oh, I forgot. I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention that. So yeah. at the end of your turn, it went to strong. At the end of the mm -hmm. round, it got shifted down to waning. I think I mentioned that before. Um, every round, it goes down one tick. So yeah. if you don't use the earth this round, it's gone. Damn. So you may want to use it this round. You don't have to use the burns. You can use some of the other cards first too if you want. I don't want to do the scenario by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to go try to go quick. I'm going to go really, really quick. So if you go like moderate or even late, they should attack me. 
again moderate being like in the 50s or 60s or 70s range and late being like 70s 80s 90s sort of thing um i did forget to mention that when monsters die they drop a coin um, the exception is if they're spawned or summoned they don't drop coins then but So as a running gag, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know. Attacking would be nice. Yeah. Given I'm probably going to take a few hits, maybe even a bottom heal would be nice too. I have some of those. I know you do. <laughs> I've played Spellweaver for about... 20 scenarios. I just don't, I'm trying to figure out which top and which bottom to use because I want to use the element before it's gone. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're, they're high initiative, low initiative? Yeah, they're both really low. I'm really fast. <laughs> okay, then uh, maybe don't heal me this turn, but if you heal me next turn, that'd be okay. So then it, I don't think there's any bottoms of yours that are really useful. So then just pick whatever high initiative that you got that you can use. Can I ask? I don't quite understand this bottom one, the one on the next two sources of damage you okay. two use for no damage. So the way that these effects work is that when you play it, it goes into this thing. It, there, there's this little continuous effect thing going on. Um, and it's it, it is just like any other burn card, so you can't use it from here on out. But what'll happen is this little icon, you'll put a little thing on it. And okay. let's say you get whacked for 10 damage. This thing would be like, mm -hmm. nope, I don't take any damage. If you get whacked any for damage at all or any damage at all, two. next sources of damage. It's very specific. So let's say you took okay. one damage and you'd like, well, it's only one damage. Doesn't matter. It's gone. Um, so this prevents the next two sources of damage. So it, 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 you don't get to choose. It's correct. Just... It, it's a it's an ongoing effect. You don't get to choose. Yep. I would say probably don't want to use that right now. Yeah, you're... I was just trying to figure out what it meant to see you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's really good when you are forced to take a couple hits. Let's say there's just too many enemies and I can't draw them all, or I'm starting to take a, I'm starting to go down in health or something. You can pop that, run in, take a couple hits for me. I get something really powerful. Oh, um, so. Uh, any sources of damage. So, you remember the wound thing, right? Mm-hmm. That would also trigger it. So, if you had it going at the start of your turn, you'd take one damage. And, yeah, that would kind of suck. What? Okay. You need me to heal this turn? No. I haven't taken any damage yet. I was just... If you were going to go later than the guards, I would take damage, then you'd heal me back up. But... As it stands, I, I should be fine. Again, it's the first scenario. I shouldn't have too much trouble. Okay. I also have a heal that I can do myself next turn. I have heal. I know. This is I, difficult. <laughs> I don't know. It, it gets easier once you get more familiar with the cards. You don't have to think, or you don't have to read all the cards to figure out what you got. You can just go, oh yeah, I, I should... Know what, I'm just trying to figure out what... You... So you want to consume the element, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so start with that card. Let do that. But if you're going to use the heal card later, you can't use that one, right? Yeah. Okay, so you got the other one then, right? And then for the bottom of that one, you don't really care because you're not playing to move or do anything with it. So then you yeah, just want... Yeah, that's the issue. You don't have bottoms for... And again, you don't have to move. You can stay in place if you want. Um, you don't have to use the burn if there's a burn there. It can just be a throwaway card. Um, if this was your consume elements card, it needs to go second. Otherwise, it's going to go too quick. Oh, okay. <laughs> then I will burn or not use. I don't know. 
if, uh, if I were to pick a card for you, I don't. I. I no. I'll just. I'll let you go. I, I'm not going to tell you how to play. Okay. Uh, so Thumbs put that one down first. Sir. There you go. Cool. Final answer. Flip it. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Eighty-three. That is pretty late. Cool. Uh, so I got fifteen. The guards got fifty. And you got 83, which means it's going to go me, the guards, then you. Uh, first things first, I'm going to pop the bottom of this one, which gives me one shield for the whole round. So that reduces my damage taken. Uh, unfortunately, I went too quick, which means my whole plan here to do a bunch of AoE was pretty dumb. <laughs> Why did I do that, Aaron? Well, okay. Anyway... Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake, yes. Uh, so I do my base two attack, so it does three damage to this guard. Minus one for the shield, so he takes two more damage. And that's my turn. Now it's the guard's turn. The enemies attack, or they, they, they go in order of elite first, in lowest number to highest number, and then normal in lowest number to highest number. So if you notice, they have one, two, three, four, five, six here. Mm -hmm. That that sort of kind of um, establishes the initiative for each indi individual one. So this is like all of those, all the guards go at this initiative, and then they go in this order. So sometimes they can butt a, butt into each other and prevent each other from moving if they are ordered correctly. And it's completely random what order they're in, but it's, uh, it can have an effect. Uh oh. Uh oh, what? Is it Isaac's Kale? moon. Oh, Isaac's moon? Maybe. Uh, okay, so the elite is going to attack me for his base value of three. Well, he's going to move and attack, but he's already in range, so he's not going to move. He's going to attack me for three. Um, so I'm pulling the modifier deck. He does three plus one. And then it's minus one for my shield, so he does three damage to me. And now the guard number one's going to go. He's going to move up. And since I had lower initiative than you, he's going to attack me for two. Minus two, so he does zero damage. And then the other, yeah, right. Uh, then the other guard's going to move up and do the same thing for zero. And their base was two, so he does two damage to me. Minus one for the shield, so he does one damage to me. Okay, uh, it's You're your turn. Alive. Your turn. Okay, uh, one other thing I need to mention, because it I didn't know it was going to come up this quick. So if you're a, if you're doing a range attack, and you're adjacent to the target that you're doing a range attack with, you have to do it at a disadvantage or a muddled attack, which means you pull two modifiers instead of one. And you'd pick the worst one. Okay, but I have moving on this one. Can I just move backwards? Yes, that is what you would want to do. So if you want to attack the guard one here, you'd have to take a step back. If you want to attack the other two, they're still at range. You don't have to move then. Okay. So which one would you like to attack? Which one is the one that's almost dead? Uh, number one, the one next to you. I'll move back. Okay. This is a base move of two, so where would you like to move? You played he... the one with the heal. <laughs> no, there's another one with heal. Oh, okay. That was a burn heal, though. What? The one that generates light, isn't that not a burn heal? Oh, wait, where's the heal? Oh. I thought you well, were going to play one... the other one. The other one had the frost armor. The other on the one has the. Yeah, the other one I have to use frost attack, which I don't have. No, not talking about that one. You should have another one that's similar to this yeah. one, with the, the the frost armor on the bottom. I believe it's called frost armor. Nope. No. Oh, that one. Yeah, but that's the one that with the the damage thing. 
that I was asking about. But you're not going to use that. That's what I was. I thought you were going to save this one, use this one, and then heal me next turn. But that's okay. I knew. I know. Don't don't judge me. Don't assume that you know what you're talking about. Anyway, uh, so you moved here, and then which one are you attacking? This one. You're going to attack guard one. All right. Are you going to use the element? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we're moving. One, right? Yep. So we're moving the element down. You get one experience for that as well. Krista? Yeah. Oh. Just, you get one experience. How do I move it up? Uh, press the number, so four. four. Yep. Unfortunately, these aren't scripted like the tokens where you can just click up, but... Uh, so you okay. get one experience for that, and you're going to be doing a three damage attack to guard number one. Can I do the modifier thing? Yep. Not just, the whole deck. Not the whole deck. Minus one. Oh. No. Alright, so you do two damage to him. He's down to one health. So close. Alright, uh, that's your turn. Both of these cards go in the discard pile because nothing was burned. My shield effect goes away. And yeah, that's that round. All right, next round. Okay, uh, mm. while you're thinking about that, I'm going to get up and walk around and grab a drink. So I'll be back. Decide what you're gonna do. I think so. Okay. Flip it. Twenty one. Got his face in the bed. No. It... Oh. <laughs> uh, so I got eighteen. You're twenty one, and then the guards are at fifty five. The guards are strengthening. So what strengthen does is on their next turn. In this case, on their next turn. Um, when they attack, they pull two modifiers from here and they pick the better of the two. That's what Strengthen ah. does. Muddle is the opposite of that. It's kind of like your ranged thing where you pick two and then you, or you draw two and then you pick the worst one. So if they're up, if they're alive next turn, they might be hitting me really hard. So let's try killing them this turn. Yep. First things first, I'm going to be generating a leaf. And I'm going to heal myself for two. Yeah. And then I'm going to attack guard number four and guard number five for this three damage attack. For one experience. So starting with the elite, minus one is two damage to the elite and four damage to the other guard. 
So I killed guard number five, and I did what two to him? There's uh... three minus one, minus one for the shield. Okay. So I did enough. Ooh, thunder. Uh, so guard five, I killed. He dropped a coin. Okay. And then it's your turn. What was my battle goal again? Oh yeah, I remember now. I was going to, well, heal you, but you already healed. <laughs> You're gonna heal me with what? And then this one. That's the burn card. You wanna burn that oh. to heal me now? Why not? I don't have a frost to use. You also have to be Jason with that one, so. You could run up and whack him in the face. You only gotta do one damage to him. What about this one? I can hit both of them. It's a three target. Yeah. But it's a three target thing. You'd rather hit three, wouldn't you? Well, so there was three. Yeah, you should have gone faster than me. I tried. I was <laughs> off by like one point. What was I? Uh, Two? You were... No, you were at 18. Never yeah. mind. You threw off my thing. <laughs> I would suggest saving that to the to a little bit later. It does it does three damage to both targets. The this guard is at one health. So just run up and beat him. Yeah, just run up and beat him. Use this one to move and this one to beat him. Yeah. You are the mage, and you're gonna go up and whack him in the face. Yep. My <laughs> Uh So if you're using it as a base attack, it's a base two attack. So just. Like any other attack, pull a modifier. Oh, you miss. What? Is, uh, oh, I'm I. <laughs> See, now that would happen anyways, and then you didn't waste the burn card then, so that's a good thing. True. Okay, ah, uh, those go in your discard. Just my discard. Yep, you didn't burn anything, so. All right. Uh, now the guards get to go. They are moving and attacking and strengthening. Um, given I had shorter initiative or smaller initiative than you, they're both going to attack me. Uh, starting with the elite, he's going to hit me for three times two. That's six damage. Sweet. Sweet. It'll let me heal you. And the other one is four damage. Guess what, Krista? I need You're to exactly. discard a card. <laughs> um, let's see. Probably going to do this card. So, by discarding one card, I negate that attack damage. Okay. Uh, I, I said before, also, if you don't have cards in your hand, you can also get rid of two in your discard pile. That is by far worse, because you're losing two cards instead of one, but if you have to, you can. Um, and then they are strengthening themselves, which means next turn they will do even more damage. So let's kill them this turn, please. Uh, since they pulled the times two, we need to shuffle their modifier deck. Since you pulled a null, you need to shuffle your deck. Uh, who, what? This th this miss is called a null. So I put it back in and shuffle? You, you pull the whole thing and put it back in your deck and shuffle. Yep. What do you mean? Flip. And how do I shuffle? Uh, you gotta flip it. Okay. And then just press R. There you go. It shuffled. so much easier playing on tabletop <laughs> you press one button and it's shuffled okay uh let's kill them <laughs> please i'm going I to have the thing. you have the thing the thing i don't know what that means the damage thing oh i'm going to be hitting them and hitting them and hitting them. I think that was the faster of the two. Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm gonna go basically as quick as I can at this point to try and get a heal off. I don't want to discard another card if I don't have to, so. You good? That's all I got, so. Okay. Flip. There was no choice in that one. Hoopa! God damn it. They're shielding and attacking. Oh, this sucks. Um, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, that really sucks. Uh, okay. So the elite is going to hit me for 
strengthen because he can't reach you. Uh, he's going to do plus one damage. It doesn't matter. I have to discard again. Oh my god. Uh, and then plus the... one. Minus one? No. It was strengthened, so both get pulled. And then he gets to choose the higher no. of the two. So it's plus one. That's right. Yep. And then the other one, since you had lower initiative than me, he's going to hit you. For oh. four damage. And poison. We're both poison now. Poison really sucks. Damn it. My damage at two. Oh my goodness. I just make it big so that it's easier to see. Yeah, so you got you got hit and poisoned. That sucks. Uh, now it's your turn. Well. Yeah. I mean, I gotta do this one. The bottom one on this one, because I want to get my cards back. Um, You don't want to use this one yet. I have nothing else I can do. Let me, okay, let me explain this one. So after this turn is done, you can rest to get most of these cards back. This card gets them back from the lost pile, not from the discard pile. You've only got but one card in the lost pile. You want to Fine. save this for later. Fine. And you shouldn't be taking hits, so you don't need to use the bottom of this one. It's it's, it's It's better to kill stuff then not kill stuff. If you kill stuff, they don't do damage anymore, right? Yes. So kill stuff. I could kill the elite. Wait, no, can I? Does he have shield? He has two shields right now. He doesn't have shield. So you'd have so to, you'd have to draw a, a plus two or times two to kill him. Do I kill the elite or do I kill the little dude? Um. Wait, but then I'm muddled because he's right next to me. You can use this as a move. move. Mm-hmm. You're starting to see the logic here. I won't kill the little dude then. Okay. Are you going to consume the element? Yes. Okay. Uh, so you get I'm an experience not. for that? Yes. So I'll mark your experience. It was just one, right? Yep. Oops. <laughs> there you go. I thought I was on the little thing. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you're doing a three damage attack to the guard. And this thing. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, pull a modifier. Is there ever a time you don't do that? Um, if there's something that says specifically do X damage, then you don't pull a modifier. If it ever says attack, then you pull a modifier. Okay. So that's most of the time. So you do three, four damage to the guard one, which will kill it. Woohoo! Okay. Um, I believe that's all you got. Now it's mm -hmm. my turn. I'm going to use the bottom of this one to do a two damage attack against the guard. Minus one, minus awesome, great, so nothing. And then I'm going to use the top of this to loot because there's no point in me doing a base 2 attack. And they grab the coins. Um, I don't want to use the health potion because it would only get rid of the poison. So I'm going to hopefully do some other stuff to get some health back. So uh, that is that round. We shuffle the monster deck because they had a, a shuffle icon. And now you and I both don't have cards left. So... We gotta rest. We gotta rest. Um, given that we're still in combat and we're both about to die, probably don't want to do a long rest here, so we're gonna do a short rest. What a short rest is... So grab the card and get rid of one? Uh, you shuffle it, you grab a random card to get oh, rid of Oh no. That one's actually... Oh, my loot card! You, you don't want to loot because you have this battle goal. So that's actually probably oh, the best right. card for you to get rid of. I forget it. Yeah. If you didn't want to get rid of the card and you wanted to choose a different card, you'd pay one life. Uh, with the Spell Weaver, uh, hold on, let me let me explain this first. With the Spell Weaver, basically in the first half of the scenario, if it's not this card, you're going to let it go. That's going to okay. be the rule of thumb because you need this card to get those cards back. So if you don't get rid of that card, you, you don't want to risk losing it and then you're going to be screwed. So 
just as a general rule of thumb with this builder. Um, so I got rid of my loot card. Wait. How do I get it? You, uh, you have... If you press the... Here, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> let, me, let me teach you something here. Okay. You see a deck, you can you can mouse over it, and you see a number, right? Sort of. It's, it's Anyways, it tells you how many cards are in the deck. If you press okay. that number, it'll draw that many cards. Ta-da! Ta-da! We really need to kill this thing right now. I will try. I'm going to disarm him so he can't get another attack in, but... Um, if you got any sort of heals you could throw my way, I would really appreciate it. I have some heals. Um, I will also be generating leaf if you go after me. So Ooh. if you don't go your super, super quickest. Wait, but I can't. Oh, that's right. I can use it. I'm going as quick as I can, but it's not as fast as your fastest one, so pick a different one. Okay. <laughs> If, if that's vague and or specific enough for you. Oh, man. I've lost three cards in the first room. <laughs> oh, my God. It's really unlucky that they drew two shield cards right away. It just mean, means that we don't do a whole lot of damage. Shield, that shield card, shield plus one, is really... But the only not burn heal. Yeah. It's too fast. Well, then use the other card as your initiative then. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. You can do that. <laughs> you don't. You don't necessarily have to play them in that order. You just use it as your initiative. After it's your turn, you can play them in whatever order you want. So. I mean, the other one is still pretty fast too, but. Mm -hmm. Bottom one was that first, right? Yep. Yes, and that is the order to play them. Otherwise, if you play the other way, you'd go quicker than me. Okay. So the guard is 30. Uh, you're, I'm 10, 20, and 30. Interesting. He's moving extra and not doing as much attacking, so... Cool. I'm going to heal myself for 2. Unfortunately, all that does is get rid of the poison. It doesn't actually heal me anything. I also generate leaf for you, and then I attack to disarm the guard for two damage, minus one because he has shield, and he is disarmed, so he does not attack this turn, okay. which means if you don't kill him this turn, it's not a big deal, but it would be nice to get a move on because we got two more rooms to go and we're already getting pretty weak. Uh, it is your turn. Doesn't matter what order I do things. If I attack him first or heal you first. Or should I heal me first? Uh you <laughs> have poison on you yet? Not. I am gonna be the tank. I would really like a heal. Fine. Oh wait, uh let's see. He three heal. I also use my healing potion here, so okay. So you're gonna heal me? What? Are you gonna heal me? I can heal you, I guess. Cool. I'm back up to eight health. Yay. Okay. Did it ever go over your max? No. Well, well I, I should take that back. One class can, technically, but general rule of thumb, no. Okay, uh, so you healed. And then I will use that leaf and attack. Okay, so you got a three attack. Um, you also get an experience for that. Damn. Oh boy. Alright, uh, so you're doing three attack against the guard. Yes. Plus zero, it sucks. <laughs> three damage, and the guard's dead. Yay! Cool. First room down. On to the next room. Uh, I need to look something up. Um, 
I need to look up the damage traps, and I don't know how much damage they do on scenario level one. Uh, where would that be under scenario level? Scenario level, page 15. Okay. Whoops. Scenario level one. The traps do three damage. Okay. All right. So the next turn, we are going to be running into the next room and uh, doing some stuff. I heard a vibration. Yeah, I'm trying to turn off my notification noise. It has to go vibrate first. Ah, uh, well, the other thing. Let's see, guards have how much health? Six? So... I'm... I, I've done the scenario, so I know what's in the next room, so I'm planning ahead for that, but... I'm sort of metagaming a little bit. Ah, <laughs> uh, so we're gonna do you. And then we need something to get there. So we're doing you with... I guess we could do you... Eh, I want to save you for next turn, I think, so... Given there will only be one enemy, probably do you and you. How many cards do you got left? You got two. I would recommend going a little bit later. Yep. Let me open up the door and then you can run in and whack something. No, open the door! Say it again. <laughs> no, I want to open the door! But I... You you know it's my I'm battle goal. <laughs> I, I want to open the door. Okay. Uh, since there, since there aren't any monsters, it's just going to be us two. So I'll just flip. 80. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you wanted to open the door. So I'm going to be generating an element for you, actually. Woohoo! Which you can use next turn. You don't have to use it this turn, but... I can't use it this turn. Uh, so I'm going to go oh, one, right. two... I reveal the room. In this room, there are trap. Trap. Uh, let's see, it's we're not playing. A trap. You know what's there? There's a bandit archer way back here. He has seven HP. And what number is that? One. And then we got two guards. I believe they're here and here. A one and five. And they've also got, well, they've got 6 HP. Alright. Uh, I'm a archer. And now we reveal what they do. So the archers are moving extra and not attacking uh, all that much. And the guards are actually attacking really hard. Okay. Um, so that was two of my three movement. So I get one more move. I'm actually going to be popping my boots to go here. the boots give me one or uh, two extra movement from that and then i'm going to attack three damage and push two on this guard number one i miss great but the, <laughs> the push two pushes him into one two both damage traps the traps do three damage a piece and he dies Woohoo! so like i said i was metagaming there because i know what was coming up so Jeez. yep all right and now it is the archer's turn they have a range of five one two three four five he cannot reach me where he is so he'll take one step forward and now he can he's going to hit me for two damage three damage uh, actually, technically, the guard... Oh, that, that was the archer. Never mind. Ah, okay. Now, the guard's gonna go. He has a movement of two. He's gonna go one. He's gonna whack me for three as well. So, he whacks me for two. Alright. Uh, now it's your turn. 
Okie dokie. Darn. Darn. I was gonna say, could I sit on the coin and then attack him? But that's she's two away, so I can't reach. That, and it would also wreck your battle goal. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, the first couple of scenarios, I forgot about that battle goal. I'm like, oh, good. I can loot a my Oh, shit. Anyway. So, we'll move four then. Mm -hmm. In the doorway. You are in the doorway. And then I can use the other one and attack him. Yes. For two damage. Three damage. Three damage? Yep, it's a range two, attack three. The first number's attack. So you got three damage, two range. Two. So you do three damage to guard number three. One, two, three. Oh, it does say three. Mm -hmm. No, two. No. Oh, yeah, three. three. <laughs> I think you're looking at the bottom. I was. <laughs> okay. And wounded. Oh, no, I no. don't have a fire. Yep. Damn it. Uh huh. Oh, man. So if I let you take, uh, so let's see another round. Um, what? That, that's the end of the round. Um, everybody went now, so it's the next turn. If I leave the guard to you, do you think you can kill it? Like, if I go and try to take out the archer, do you think you can do three damage to the guard before he hits you? Because I, I need to start taking out the archer, otherwise he's just going to destroy me. Uh, I have two cards left, and only... I could... No. Not... It... You, you also have the option to short rest here to get your uh, get some of your cards back if you want. The other option you have is to go invisible to prevent them attacking you, but... Oh, I have so another one, too. Oh, no. So you could run up, whack them, go invisible. Uh, you could short rest to get your cards back, and then choose one of the range attack cards. Um, potentially, even if I you... Because I have one that's melee. The immobilized one, yeah. Yeah. Do we have frost? No, we don't. We do not. Yeah, it's it's pretty tough going for the spell weaver without elements. And it'll be a while before you really get to generate it, but <coughs> you okay there? Dying. I uh, I guess it's either get cards now or get cards later. So. Yeah. Um. If you rest now, you lose one turn basically. Which may or may but not be bad, but... Lose the turn now or then. So you're gonna rest, is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Do I lose one from the pile there, or do yes. I have to put all my cards in nope. there? Nope, you lose one from the pile. So, flip. Flip. Shuffle. Shuffle. Pick one. And go. Okay, which one is it? <clears throat> eh, that kind of sucks, but... That's the one I just used. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna get those back. Yep, you get those back. So and now with your turn. now with your refreshed hand, what are you going to play this turn? I thought that was my turn. No, that was a short rest. If you long rest, then you get to pick what card you get rid of. Uh... You skip your turn. This archer is gonna fucking destroy me. <laughs> you Do might you care what order it goes in? Huh? Do you care? Do I have to go slow or fast? Uh, I would recommend going up? fast to try and kill the guard before he whacks me or you. Okay. 
this one. And if you still have that heal, if you could pop a heal on me before I run in, that would be great. <laughs> I... Okay. Okay, ready? Yep. Okay, flip. Nice. Alright. Uh, archers are attacking two targets in place, and the guard is shielding and attacking. Oh no! Oh, bitch. Okay, um, you get to go first because you had your seven. So please kill that uh, guard. <laughs> well, yes, I'll use this one. Okay. To attack and then use the element. Okay. For plus one. Yep. So you get experience for that? Oh, that's right. Alright, uh, so you got a three damage attack. Thank god. Damn. God damn it. Alright. He's dead, dead. Yes, you killed the guard. Good job. Then I'll heal you. Okay. Ah, uh, you're healing me for three. Oh shit. Does that, does that work for healing? Um. What do you mean? Oh yeah, you're not close. Yep. That's okay. Ah, uh, so you'll heal yourself for the poison. the poison then. So you're poisoned. I forgot about that. That's okay. Oh, my other one has range, but that one you have to burn. Yep. So now that you you see that the not only non-burn heal you have, you have to be adjacent. That is where mm -hmm. in your advanced abilities you have this one. So you can use that as a top heal. Range 3, 3 oh, heal. Oh, Jesus. Uh, the problem is that it's a top, which means you can't attack that turn. But, you know, it's, it's good for on-the-move healing and that sort of thing. Um, anyways, so the guards don't get to go. That's nice. So the dead. heal just healed the poison, right? Or yes. do I get health back too? Nope. Uh, that's the unfortunate thing with the poison, is that... That was the poison that did that. Yep. Okay. Uh, so this archer has five attack. One, two, three, four, five. What I could do is take a step back. Or yeah. if I take a step back, I don't get a, I don't get a hit. Is... I don't get hits, but he's only, he's hitting for two, which isn't too bad, assuming he doesn't draw a positive. But if I take a step back, that's kind of just delaying the inevitable, and I have to run even further the next turn. You know, I think I'm going to run forward. I'm going to run three, grab a coin, and then I'm going to attack three, range three, minus one, man, of course. So I do two damage to him and to generate experience. And now the archer gets to go. He's going to attack me for two damage. Two damage. So I'm down to one health. And that is the round. I need to short rest again. And unfortunately, I can't do anything to prevent that loss because I don't have the health. I do have a range attack I can do. So I think I'm gonna heal myself and then hit him from range again, so. With your help, I might be able to kill him this turn. Um, I'm gonna go pretty quick as well and generate an element, so if you go after me. Although I think you use both your cards for that now, so. What? I'm just mumbling to myself, but. <laughs> Use both my cards for what? The generating you, element? No, consuming yeah. element. You use both of them for consuming. Well, yeah, that's what I meant. I'm tired. Brain not work. <laughs> I'm useless now.
so what are you doing? A whole lot of jack squat. I... Can I move forward the most? Good. I guess. Flip it. Alright, uh, so they got 32. They're moving, attacking, and doing all extra damage. I got 18, so I get to go first. I am going to attack 3, range 3 him again. Of course I pull my miss in the desperate time. Always. Wouldn't have it any other way. And then I heal myself to and generate leave, so your turn. Mm. I don't really know. <laughs> my cards, I can't, like, I mean, I can move four and get close, but then I can't attack that one. And sometimes that's all you can do. So this turn, you might just have to move up next to me and then just do something next turn. Like what? I have one card. So you have to short rest then. So he's going to hit me for four. Four damage. And I've only got three health. So guess what? You die. I need to discard another card. I could have healed you, but then that would have burned the card. No, you couldn't have healed me because you weren't in range. It's a range of four. You were One, in the doorway? Two. Three, yeah, oh, never mind. One, two, three, four. I was one off. I could use the move on the other one, though. Questions what I want to do this turn. My biggest attack would be four and stun. I'd burn another card and I'm down quite a bit. I only get one more turn anyway, so I'm hoping that we kill it this round so I can actually long rest. So I think I'm going to get rid of my. Attack three push. Yeah, okay. Well, that kind of sucks, but all right. So I'm going to go as quick as I can. I'm going to try hitting it. He has five health, so between the two of us, hopefully we can... Can I generate earth? Oh, yeah. So you do, you do have earth this round. Okay, I have to short rest. Yep. <laughs> wow. Lovely. That's okay. So you got four cards. Okay. How far am I in one? So I have the let's see how many cards I got two oh my god I am wow I'm I'm already down to five cards <laughs> this is not good I certainly don't want to burn that card so my best attack I can do is only a few damage so hopefully you can help uh, go as quick as I can and whack them. Forgot how clunky level one characters feel. No items to speak of. And... All right, ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Sixty-eight. So they're good. All right. So you get to go first. I plan to run up and whack him. So. 
or how how much does he have left? He has five left, and I I'm gonna hopefully do three damage. So if you consume that element, you'll do three, and between the two of us, we should be able to kill it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. So you're I consuming the element. Nope. <laughs> Plus zero. Okay, so you do three damage to him. And you also get an experience okay. for that. Oh, that's right. Ah, oh, the experience. Okay, so I'm gonna move here and whack him for three. Three damage, he's dead. Yay! Oh boy. Okay. I'm going to long rest this time. I do not. Should have... I be using that card now? Because I only have four cards to choose from. Um. Might not be a bad idea. Sort of a wasted turn since I have to long rest this turn anyway. Mm-hmm. And you are down to four, so you, you, you'll get those four back and... Yeah, you're essentially in much better shape than I am at this point, so... Plan to burn a lot of cards in the next room. What's that? Just... Does it matter? Nope, because I'm long resting, so you get to go. Ba bam Ba bam I'm gonna use that one. You want it here? Uh, can I make a recommendation again? Uh -huh. Use the bottom of this first. <laughs> the heal one. Yeah, heal me, and then you'll get that back immediately. Oh, okay. Yeah. What about me? I'm down to two. Oh, okay. I'm Fine. the tank, <laughs> right? Okay, <laughs> just making sure. Um, okay, so you use this, which this burns one. it. And then now and then... you use that, so you get these cards back immediately. Do I just nope, nope, nope. And... You get them in your hand. Huh. So just press the five over it. All right. Uh, so that's your turn. I long rest, which means I get my boots back. I get two health, and I get to choose the card to get rid of. I don't think I can afford that card. So I'm down to like one, two, three, four turns left. Okay. So yeah, we need to clear the room and anyway. Uh, so. I'm gonna try going quicker than you. What's the range on that three? On what? On one of my abilities. <laughs> and we'll do this as well. Yeah, we'll do that, and then next turn we'll do that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go as quick as I can to open the door. So you may want to go a little bit later to go after me. Like moder moderately late, I think is what I did. Or... So I'm going relatively fast. If you go moderately fast, then you'll go after me. Mm hmm. This is the last room, Krista. You are in much better shape than I am. Because I just refreshed. You just refreshed, yes. That is... If, if you played the Spellweaver, like, very little burn cards, or using very little burn cards, you can last... You can outlast someone with 12 cards in their hand. Even mm -hmm. though you only have 8. It's just... It's ridiculous. So... Okay. Ready? Flip. 27. Okay. I get to go first. I'm going to use this as a move three. So I'm going to go one, two, and reveal the room. So this is where the tables are. The chest in the corner. There's coins on the ground. And we've got two living bones. And da 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 da, two more archers. Oh. Uh, three and five. These are not elite, though, so they don't hit as hard. Okay. Uh, they still suck, but, you know. 
Uh, and then the bones. What are the bone numbers? Seven and ten. Where does it say the net? Oh. They've got five health piece. Okay. Bones have shield. They also attack two targets if they can. The archers are just archers. Um, this one they are mobilizing, so good. Um, so I'm going to use my boots to make sure I can make it to where I want to be. I'm going to be pushing them because of my ability. And then I'm going to be attack three, range attack on... The bones don't hit as hard as the archers, although the archers aren't hitting me hard this turn. I really want to get rid of the archers, though, I think. Do it. Save me. I only have two health. They can hit me, then. Mm, only if they have multi-target. They're going to try not hitting you first, so... Um, I am going to hit one of the range archers uh, for... I'm going to hit the range number three for three, two... Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Like I said, I'm in desperate need, and I'm, I'm not pulling good numbers at all. Uh, so I get experience for that. Um, let's see. You got, what, 36? So the archers are going to go. They're both attacking me for one damage apiece. Times two, so that's two damage. And one more damage. Okay, then it's your turn. The bones are going to run up and whack me. Um... You, unfortunately, can't reach anything. Unless I burn. I don't need to loot, so I don't Ooh. need that card. Does it say you can't loot treasure tiles? Ah, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, well, then you could burn that. What is it? Move eight? Go just stand mm -hmm. on the treasure tile? But then you would lose your battle. Can goal. I stand on it and not loot? No. If you end your turn on a, on a tile, you'll loot it. So the question is, do you really want to get to your battle goal, or do you want to see what's inside that chest? What's the chest for? Uh, the chest contains items, um, items, money, sometimes check marks, experience, uh, sometimes bad stuff. But given it's the first level, it's probably not bad stuff. Meaning, like you could get it too. Um. About that. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, anyway. I. Anyway. So, uh, do whatever you can. Or do whatever you want. Can I stand on a table? No. Dang. <laughs> if you had flying? Yes. You do not have flying, no. Oh, man. So what you could do, since you still have your invisibility cloak, you could run up, and if you stand here, they would not be able to attack you because you're invisible, and then I would only get hit by one of the bones. If you are going to bring oh, yeah, that card to move, move you. or me, yeah, they would treat you as an obstacle. Yeah, so I, I was going to use that one to move. Okay, so you are I using that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would be a really helpful spot to make sure I don't get hit. That's a good point. I will do that then. Okay. So you moved whatever that was. It wasn't eight, but you generated wind and you burned that card. <laughs> okay. And then Can you got... I... Attack? Attack, yeah. Yep. What are you going to attack? I guess one of the archers, I don't want to attack the guy I'm next to. Okay. It's range two, so I can hit him. Yep. Is there one that has less health than the other? Number three does. He has four health. So if you draw a plus one, you'll kill it. I'll attack him. Nope. Oh. How many so. of those are left? I've hit, I've like, every time. 
you've pulled four of the six. So there's two more zeros left in your deck. Um, but he's almost dead. Yep. Okay. Um, and then you're gonna are you gonna use your cloak to go invisible? Yes. Okay. So the cool thing about the cloak and in invisibility is that it doesn't end until the end of your next turn. So if you go really late next turn, you'll skip over their turns and stay invisible for all all of their next turns. So do you have a really late card you can use? Yes. So you may want to use uh -oh. that next turn. What's up? Isaac is stirring. I think he's good. Okay. Maybe. So and here's right. here is where they kind of. Oh wait. Okay. Uh, so starting with Living Bone Seven, he's gonna move two. He has to go around oh. you. And then Living Bones Ten is gonna move up, and he's gonna whack me. He's gonna hit me for two damage. One damage. Nice. Well, he can't attack you. Even now, only the one can attack you because they can't stone on each other, right? Exactly. Yep. That's why you being there helps me a lot. Mm-hmm. Till I die. Well, if you go late, it'll skip over your turn. You won't get attacked next turn. Yeah. Yeah. As long as they die. So now I have the... The question of, do I... Start inching towards the chest and hit something along the way and take a couple hits. I think that's what I have to do, so I'm not going to be able to heal this round. That kind of sucks. Oh, wait, I'm immobilized. I can't move anyway, so then that sort of dictates what I get to do, so never mind. All right. Have to shuffle their deck. Oh, boy. What are you doing? My turn? Yep. Well, yeah, it's everybody's turn. So you're going late to... Let your cloak. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, that's right. They uh they put the chests in here, didn't they? They did. Nice. Okay. Treasure index number seven. There we go. Cool. So I, when the chest comes, I can reveal it right there. That's nice. I forgot about that. So I don't have to go look it up in the scenario book. All right, ready? Yeah. Flip. 70, 18, 44. Why are you guys always attacking extra? And target one enemy with all attacks. Great. Great. Um, wonderful. Well, given he's attacking me twice, I could do four damage to him using my retaliate. I'm going to heal myself for two. I can't move, so I'm staying put. I'm attacking this the bones in front of me for three damage. Minus one, of course. Uh, minus one for their shield, so I do one damage to this bones. I am not much help to you, Krista. I'm going to die. <laughs> You're going to die. Okay. Uh, so now it's... Oh, yeah, the Living Bones. Right. You're going to uncloak before them. Uh-huh. Well, you'll be able to hit all of them with your impaling eruption, so that's good. Uh, so the Archer, they're both attacking me for three damage apiece. So that's two damage. And two damage. And then the then it's your turn. What are you doing? I was going to do the... Impaling eruption? Chain Lightning. Okay. I can hit all four. Yes, you can. One, two, three, four. You could, um, if you move here, the bones will attack me instead of you. And then you'd only be muddled okay. against that archer. If you're here, you're muddled against these two because it's technically a ranged attack. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't think of that. Yeah. So, so then use think? this one to move. Yeah. So is that what you're doing? You're moving there? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four. 
Okay, which one do you want to hit first? Um, well, I guess first let's mark your experience. You get four experience for that. You generate a lot of experience. No, I do. Uh, how do I how do I do twelve? It's gonna go to one, isn't it? You you press one two, really quickly. There you go. Oh okay. Uh... Okay, uh, and then you're gonna do a three damage attack. Let's start with the archer in front of you because you're muddled. So pull two cards. So it's either a minus one or a minus one. Hey, guess what? It's a minus one. It's a minus one. But uh, the other benefit of attacking him is that he only had one health left. So he's uh, dead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which next one next? One. Uh, next. You want to do the archers Arch or the bones? Archers? Okay. So three damage. Four damage. So he's down to one health. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll do the living bone seven. I'm just going in order. That's that's all. Yeah. Minus two, uh, minus one for the shield, so you do nothing to that one. Okay. And zero. Minus one for the shield, so you do two damage to that one. All right. Um, you ready to handle the scenario on your own now? <laughs> Yeah, this is not going to last very long. Okay, uh, so this one was a burn card. And this one goes in your discard. Oh, wait, I could have used this thing on well, that, could How about I? we say you did that? <laughs> so you actually do some damage. Yeah. Um, which means you will kill the other archer thing. then. Because that would have been enough to kill the archer. So the bones are number 10's down to 1 and number 7's down to 4. So you only have to kill two bones by yourself. Um, Did those those go down too, right? Yeah. Um, so this okay. bones is going to target me since I'm closer and, uh, well, we're at the same distance, but I had lower initiative, so he's going to hit me first. He's going to hit me for one damage mm -hmm. twice, plus one, so that's two. Awesome. If he pulls any, oh my god, I'm not going to be able to do anything. Minus two, there's zero. Okay. Now number 10 is going to attack me for zero. And one damage, so I have to discard two. Awesome. Awesome. Um, which, I guess it doesn't matter which two, because I'm not going to get to go. <sighs> Fuck. God damn it. Okay, uh, so let's see another that round. So, I'm going to long rest, because that's the only thing I can do this round. You have I to have kill... To yes. Yep, you're down to. You just got to kill both skeletons, Crystal. <laughs> that's a little unfortunate, but that's okay. It's like the only one I don't have to use shit for. I, I meant more that it's a bottom attack, so you could get two attacks in one turn, but. Um, Why? Oh, that's right. You know. Maybe you want to save that one so you can get two attacks in one turn. Because your fire orbs isn't going to do you a whole lot of good now because there's only two targets and one of them's almost dead. Yeah. Do I get to choose? You don't get to choose, but you can choose to not lose this one for one HP and then randomize the other three. Okay. <laughs> And then so just so you get this one for sure. You pay one life. And then you randomize mm -hmm. the other one. <sighs> That's <sighs> unfortunate, but okay. You're learning. <laughs> um so as I said, this round I am long resting, because if I short rest I can't do anything. At least long resting I can take a hit for you. Mm-hmm. Are they shielded or anything? Or no? I yeah, don't they know have that, the really? they both have one shield right now. I 
I mean, is it worth it doing the fire orbs? Because it's hitting both of them. Uh, if you use the fire orbs and that, you'll have two more turns after that. Um, fire orbs would hit both. And then if you're using your bottom attack, you can try finishing off that other bones then, and you might be able to finish at this scenario, so. Or this uh -huh. this turn, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna try that? Yeah. The question is, is that fast enough? Or you could just do a normal attack uh, with, with an attack bottom to try and kill off one of the skeletons. Because one of the skeletons is going to hit me this turn, most likely. Living Bones. So you, you technically have two turns to finish it before they'll come and attack you. If you can go... You can kill one of them, but... Chat says, fire orbs for the win. <laughs> <laughs> I do still have that damage card thing too. Uh, so so by playing that, what it does is it essentially turns one lo one uh, card to prevent damage, because you know you could discard a card to prevent damage. It turns one into two, if that makes sense. So you can take two ticks of damage, or you can hold on to it until you need to lose a damage. If that makes sense. Yeah. Anyway. I think I think I know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Alright, I'm long resting, so what are you doing? 36, you get to go first. The the <laughs> bones are moving and attacking at a 45, so what are you doing? I'll do the fire fire orbs! Fire orbs! Okay, uh, so we got two targets, so you get two experience. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Just realized. Has the fire. Yeah. Use that next round. <laughs> yup. Hey, look at that. There's some synergy in your class. Imagine that. <laughs> well, the other things wouldn't have really done a whole lot this turn, so. Yeah. Uh, so you get uh, two targets, okay. so you get two experience. I don't have to be next to him for that one, do I? For what? The fire orbs? No, that's fire ranged. Orbs. The okay. range three, yep. So, again, you got two targets, so two experience. Okay. And then, uh, which one do you want to attack first? Which one has less? Number 10. Yeah. Okay. Let me just check to make sure you're not... Yep, okay. Go ahead. <gasps> Alright, so you do 3, minus 1, minus 1 for the shield. That is enough to kill it. Woohoo! Did you say there was minus 2s in here? Uh, yes. But you've already pulled it. Did I? Yep. Oh, okay. So all, all the only negatives in there now are your miss. And maybe some minus ones. Plus one. So you do four damage to number seven. He's got one shield, mm -hmm. so he's down to one health. Oh, and I have an attack. Yes, you do. The bottom attack. Yes, she she's carrying me hard. I this whole <laughs> this whole scenario has just been one big shit show. Uh, me pulling nulls and negatives, and I don't think I got a times two or a positive two at all. I've just been face tanking everything. I just spell weaver's my class, not the brute. Um, anyway, that one's minus one. Minus one, so it's a two damage minus one, minus one for the shield. So you do not kill him. Uh, you do get an experience for that though. Woohoo! Actually, I think on second edition that's actually not experience anymore, but we'll just run with it. It's fine. Okay, uh, so now the, the Living Bones is going to go. He cannot reach both of us, so he's just going to hit me. And he's going to hit me for one damage. One damage. Guess what? You're dead. I You're have to discard. Not. And then I long rest, but I can't long rest. So yes, I am exhausted. So 
Oi, oi, oi. All right, uh, the elements wean, and your turn. So, if you want to give up your battle goal, you can see what's inside the chest. Kill the skeleton, see what's inside. Um, what do the I chest. get for doing the battle goal? You get two check marks. You need three check marks to get a perk, and so that'll be two thirds of the way to the perk. That's up to you, though. I mean, we can always come back in a casual mode and replay this one to get that chest. So if you want to just finish it and kill the skeleton, that's fine. Get your battle goal. It's yeah, not... I want I want my check marks. OK. So how are you going to finish off this last living bones? By the way, uh, that, that fire orbs was burned. Just so you know, I was. Didn't I put it? Nope. Oh, did you? Yep. Did you grab it? Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right, what you got, Krista? Going as quick as you can to kill it, I hope. 20? That's, that's as quick as I can go. Guess what? He got a 22. Guess what that means? I go first? Yeah. Players go first. Kill it. Kill oh, it. Oh, there is an element. I can use that. Yes. Kill it. Before it heals, I'll do that. kill it. I'll do that. Attack two. Attack three. Three. Mm -hmm. When you consume the element, it goes up by one. Oh, that's right. Uh, so and getting... I get an experience. Yep. You've got one negative one and one miss in there. So come on, <gasps> something positive. Pressure is on. Plus one. Good. <laughs> <laughs> dead dead I would hate to so now you have the choice since you haven't used the bottom of this one yet again this is your choice you want to get the, the chest or your two check marks no no I want my check marks you want your check marks okay <laughs> okay all right uh so with the last bandit dead you take a moment to catch your breath and steel yourself against the visions of living remains ripping at your flesh your target is not among the dead, and you shudder to think of what horrors still await you in the catacombs below. New location, barrel lair number two. And then we got the party achievement, first steps. So, battle goals. And at the style, mine was to reveal a room, which we did right away. Yours was to not loot anything, which you didn't, so you get your two check marks. Um, I will... Uh, mark down your experience, which you got 16. What is the base level for level one? You get six. Can I put it down here? No, because I'm going to be re uh, reverting back. So um, let me revert back first, and then, then we'll update that character sheet. So give me a sec. Um, I'll, I'll write this stuff down. So for completing a level one scenario, we get six bonus experience. So you got 16. That seems kind of stupid to have a character sheet and then have it erase all the time well that th that's why we save state before we go into a scenario so we don't have to do clean cleanup so you uh -huh. do a scenario you mark down your experience of coins and that stuff you revert back to that save state you update your character sheet and then you save over it so at that uh -huh. point it carries forward but um so you got 16 experience plus six which is 22 you did not get any coins and you got two check marks i got five plus six which is 11 I got three coins at a rate of two per coin, so I got six gold. And I got one check mark. I believe that's everything, so let's go back. Okay, um, and I'm, I'm going to just delete everything. I'll delete, please. Uh, 22 battle, oh, because that's there. That's right, because I save stated it a little bit uh, after we started the scenario. That's, why didn't you delete? There we go. Okay, so now let's update your character sheet. You got 22 experience. You clicking actually does help, by the way. Uh, okay. it, it counts both of us. Uh, so you get 22 experience, and then down here there's these notes. You got two check marks. 
like I said, once you get the third one, then you get to pick one of these um, perks to have, which change mm -hmm. your modifier deck and makes it better. I got one check mark, six gold, and what did I say? Eleven experience. All right. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna go over to the map now. We unlocked. We finished number one. And then we unlocked number two, the barrel layer. Uh, and then we got the party achievement, first steps. First steps, why are you centered like that? That's, or is there just another one? I wanna type over here. Nope, uh, I guess not. All right, well, whatever. First steps, party achievement. Well, you did your first scenario, Krista. We didn't fail too bad. <laughs> By we, I mean me. <laughs> I didn't fail. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I'm overriding it. So at, at, at this point, um, we're not going to do anything more because it's you know 11 o'clock. We don't want to start another scenario. But um, mm -hmm. after this, you would do another city event. You would shop around town. So if you wanted to buy some items, sell some items, you would do that. Um, I don't know. Can you visit the Great Oak yet? Yes. Yeah, how would you know? <laughs> I don't. Uh, the Great Oak is something you can donate 10 gold to to um, get a check mark. No, add two blesses to your deck. Speaking of which, I need to oh, remove the curses from the deck. I'm surprised. We had two curses in our deck for the scenario effect, and none, neither of them showed up. I didn't do too bad as far as the modifiers and stuff. Yeah, you got all the good luck. I got all the bad luck. It's that, that was... bracelet. <laughs> it's the bracelet? From from Stardew Valley. Oh, the added luck bracelet, yes. <laughs> I I think I think the Great Oak is available right now. But anyway, uh, so if you had 10 gold, you could donate to the Great Oak. Neither of us have that, so obviously we're not going to do that. I have no gold. I'm and... a broke bitch. Yeah. Um, so basically at that point, we would just do a city event and then do another road event and do the next scenario. But as it is, we're going to call it for the night. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. You guys say goodbye. Good night.